Thank you so much for joining us for today's message. If you would like to find out more about the ministry or give financially, visit us at fusionchurch.cc. And we hope you enjoy this series, Breathe, by Pastor Brendan. Come on, it's a good time. Listen, you have perfect attendance for 2016. That's a good Sunday, you know, like perfect attendance. I'm ready to go. I've been at church every Sunday that there's been in 2016. That's a good time. Listen, I know God has a powerful, powerful word for every one of us. And so my uh, challenge to you is, would you give him some space today? In this next time together, would you just simply make some room for him to speak to you. There might be some tough things, but that's all right. He might stretch you a little bit. But listen, if you have ever done any type of working out, if you don't rack some extra weight, you're never going to stretch that muscle. And so my prayer and my ask today is let's stretch ourselves a little bit. Let's believe that God, regardless of who we are, you might be 16, you might be 13, you might be eight years old in this room, or you might be all the way up there. But let's just ask him to stretch ourselves. Can we do that today? Let's go ahead and pray. Lord, we love you in this place. We ask that you would move in a powerful, supernatural way. God, I pray, give us eyes to see, give us ears to hear, give us a mind to conceive, conceive the powerful plans that you have for us, oh God, the purpose and the destiny. Would you reveal it to us? And we do ask this in Jesus Christ's name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Let's go ahead and let's uh, dig into this question or the, really the title of today's message. We're going to spend a lot of time talking about fasting. But the question that I had to ask myself is this, who owns your body, yourself or Christ? As we kind of launch into 2016, who owns my body, myself or Christ? So I don't know about you, but my physical body, my mind, my will, my emotions often get me in trouble. You ever been there? Your mind gets you in trouble, your will gets you in trouble, and obviously no, none of us here, but no one's emotions ever get ourselves in trouble, you know, like roller coaster ride, high highs, low lows, you know, you're like, woohoo, and then you're down in the, you know, no, that's no one in that room, is that right, just, you know, just me, I'm the only person like that, high highs, low lows, all those kind of things, like I just always tell my wife, can we just be steady, like steady, like steady, you know, like why do we have to be high? We have to be low. We have three ladies in the house. We got a, you know, we got an 11-month-old. She got a personality the other day. I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm in trouble. 11 months, you already got a personality. You're disagreeing with me. I have a beautiful five-year-old. She's going on 18. She disagrees with everything I've ever said. I'm like, and then I got my beautiful wife. She never disagrees with me, okay? So, so mind, will, and emotions, we all got that. And so the discipline of fasting does my body own me or do I, uh, does Christ own my body? I think that's a question to ask in 2016. And, and, and so wh why, why fasting? Because we, we talk about this in fasting. Stated simply, biblical fasting is refraining from food for a spiritual purpose. Biblical fasting is refraining from food for a spiritual purpose. When you eliminate food from your diet for a number of days, your spirit becomes uncluttered. I love that. Your spirit becomes uncluttered. How many of us have come out of this Christmas, New Year's season a little cluttered around here, you know, just, just, just a little bit cluttered, you know, like every cookie you saw, it went in your mouth. Normally, you, you know, like in July, you would say no, you know, because you got to go to the beach and you got to look good, but you're like, it's getting cold and I can eat that cookie. You know, you walk by and a piece of fudge went in your mouth, you know, you had an extra helping that started on Thanksgiving and all the way through the Christmas season, those helpings continued. <coughs> And so the question about fasting is our spirit when we fast becomes uncluttered. And then I went on to write this down. I said, by the things of this world, and amazingly, we become sensitive to the things of God. So when we fast, when we put aside food, when we put aside things of this world, we become more sensitive to God. And so today I'd love to spend just a few moments talking about the discipline of fasting, the discipline of fasting. And I know we could start 2016 off with like, let's risk more for this region, but we're already doing that. You know, let's, let's give more to impact the kingdom of God. We're already doing that in a huge way. Uh, let's serve more. Come on, we can, we can keep on doing that and get in the game. But I think if there's a game changer that I've seen in my life, specifically over the last 20 years of pastoring, uh, and really 12 years of marriage because my wife and I have fasted through this time, is this whole discipline of fasting. And, and the very words of discipline of fasting means it's not easy. It's not easy to say no. 
I mean, just think, how many coffee lovers do we have in the room today? Just, you know, this side's like, yes, this, no, no, no one likes coffee over here. <clears throat> My wife and I's relationship was built on coffee. It's the first thing I do every morning, okay? So, so when I begin to say no to coffee yeah, starting on January 10th. In fact, I don't even get to January 10th because for the last 20 years of fasting, my body has told me when I give up coffee, it's gonna own me. Have you ever had that feeling like I'm the own you? <laughs> and so um, I will start this week, I will start doing a little decaf and a little regular. And, and I'll do like a quarter decaf and, and, and three quarters regular. And then I'll do half decaf, half regular. And then I get to the end of the week, I have three quarters decaf and a quarter regular so that when I get to next January 10th, next Sunday, I'm ready to go and my body's not going to own me. But when we put aside things of this world, when we stop having processed foods, <coughs> when we put aside maybe TV or sports or uh, Facebook or social media or those different types of things, then all of a sudden it's like, well, what am I supposed to be doing? Because uh, my, my face is in my phone. My face is on the TV. Uh, some of us are so accustomed to every single morning, you got your slippers, those ugly slippers on, and you walk out and you pick up the press of Atlantic City, you walk back in, you got your coffee, you drink it, you read the newspaper, and then all of a sudden you tell your mind, your mind, will, and emotions, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to spend time pressing into God. And your body says, listen, what are you doing? Your mind says, what are you doing? You're like, I need that stuff because our bodies have become so accustomed. And so the discipline of fasting, who owns our bodies? Is it ourselves? Is it our flesh? Or is it Christ? Because as we study Scripture as Christ followers, then we need to say we're fully submitting to what God is doing in our life. I've recently been reading a book by the author Brene Brown. Brene Brown, powerful author, and her book called Rising Strong, she makes the following statement. She says this, We are still the most indent, obese, medicated, and addicted adults in human history. As the United States of America, she writes this, we are still the most in-debt, obese, medicated, and addicted adults in human history. Every single one of us in this room today needs a calibration. We need to be calibrated. You think about a scale. Scales have to be calibrated. The other day I was uh, flying and we were in the Phoenix airport flying back here and I put my uh, luggage flying with three kids. You've got 50 pounds of exact luggage and I put it on and the lady said it weighed 51.5 pounds and I said "Uh -uh, uh uh-uh, uh-uh. I weighed it at home. It is 50 pounds exactly. And she said, okay, hold on. She said, lift it up. And she said, let me reset it. Let me recalibrate it. And that's what fasting does. It recalibrates. It resets us so that God can continue speaking. In fact, in the Old Testament, in the book, in Daniel, Daniel is in captivity. He is a slave really to a king. And they're asking him to do all these things. And he says, kind of, hey, time out. I'm going to do a fast. And in the fast, God is going to deliver us from this situation. And so we see in Daniel chapter 10, verse 3 and 12, in the message translation, it tells us the following. It says, I ate no choice food. No meat or wine touched my lips. And I used no lotions at all until the three weeks were over. Then he continued, do not be afraid, Daniel. So this is the angel speaking. Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding. Everyone say gain understanding. Gain understanding. And to, what is that? Humble yourself before God. Those two things. Gain understanding and humble yourself before God. Then, come on, let's read this together. Your words were heard and I have come in response to them. Your words were heard and I have come in response. The angel is saying, listen, you humbled yourself. There's powerful principles here. You humbled yourself and you desired to gain understanding. And because of that very thing, the, the, the needs that you have, the miracles that you desire in your life, the issues that are going on, I have dispatched the miracle for it to happen. And so the question today is, are you ready for a miracle? Ask your neighbor. Neighbor, are you ready for a miracle? Kind of turn around and say, hey, are you ready for a miracle? Because every one of us, come on, let's be honest. Every one of us in this room needs a miracle. Somewhere, somehow. Maybe you're the miracle. Maybe your mind's the miracle. Maybe your miracle is the person sitting next to you and you just don't want to acknowledge it. Like, 
they really need a miracle, you know? And they're praying the same thing. They really need a miracle type of a thing. Uh, maybe it's your family. Maybe it's your house. Maybe it's your, I mean, all the, but we need God to step in. Maybe it's physically. Maybe it's mentally. We need a miracle. And so Daniel says, listen, in the miracle that I needed, I desired to gain understanding. I desired to humble myself before God. And then I stepped out in faith, believing that my miracle was dispatched. And I believe that can happen for you and I in 2016. And so again, the question, who owns your body, yourself or Christ, your flesh? Because I've realized this as I've fasted. Remember me three lessons that we could learn today. Number one, fasting allows me, fasting allows me to recognize the power of the flesh. Think about it. Fasting allows me to recognize the power of the flesh. And we, we use the analogy of coffee. Uh, but, but the illustration can go far and wide. Uh, g- give up Pepsi or, or Coke. Some of you like, you know, that Diet Coke, it owns you. It own, I mean, you're thinking, we're, we're, you know, that, that, that monster energy drink, like you can't live your day. Listen, if you're living your day with a monster energy drink, you've got issues already, okay? And, and, and your body is owning you. Um, right in the beginning, Daniel said, I ate no choice food, no meat. And some of you are like, well, I don't care about meat anyway. And then we got to the part, oh, wine touched my lips. Some of you were sweating already. I just saw you sit, like, no wine. No. What, what, what do you mean? No, like 21 days, no wine, like no drinking, no beer. Come on. I make my own beer. What am I going to do for 21 days? You're not going to die, okay? I promise you that. You're not going to die. Instagram's not going to go away. Facebook's not going to go away. Trust me, ESPN will not go bankrupt if you don't watch it for 21 days days. I can promise you that. But at the end of the day, how desperate are you for a miracle? How desperate are you for God to step into your life? How desperate are you to get some super on your natural? Because God is a specialist of the impossible. You and I, come on, we tried the possible in 2015 and we're insane. Insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. Some of us were insane in 2015 and we've turned the corner in 2016 and let's believe that God can do the impossible in 2016. Let's believe that He can show up in our life when we step in we say hey for 21 days I'm gonna put this aside it's not legalism okay it's not trying to get how close I can get to that do I use salt to is it you know is it uh sea salt is it iodine salt who cares just do what you need to do you know is that from the ground coffee's from the ground pastor Uh, you know what there's other things from the ground that are not good for you either I'm not going to say it here but at the end of the day don't be legalistic just simply say come on God I'm the press into you for 21 days and I'm the realize that my body my flesh has control of me Two years ago, uh, we were talking about this very same thing, and we were starting the fast on the Monday, and a gentleman came up to me and said, listen, he said, I've chewed tobacco since I was a teenager. I've drank Wawa coffee for over 25 years. I've never skipped a day, the big jugs of coffee. He said, I go home every day, and I drink a minimum of four beers if it's been a good day. If it's a bad day, the beer drinking just keeps on going. And he says, today I'm giving everything up. If I'm honest with you, I want to say, please don't. You just might die. I mean, serious. Like, chew, drink, and coffee. I mean, you're going to be dead. And guess what? In 21 days, that man's marriage was set free. That man's physical body was set free. That man's destiny was set free. Everything in 21 days because he started to do that. And I turned around and said, man, if that guy can do it, any one of us in this place can do it. How desperate are we for God? Because our flesh is going to revolt. Come on, your flesh is going to revolt. When you say no to that white bread, it's going to say, I own you. When you say no to that sugar, it's going to say, I own you. When you say no to that, I mean, you're going to be standing in Wawa and all of a sudden, everything going to smell good in Wawa. You never have eaten McDonald's in like 10 years and all of a sudden, you're going to be standing, you know, at the stop sign or at the traffic light and you're going to look over and you're going to see that big Whopper sign and you're going to, mmm, that smells good right now. You never even like McDonald's, but on a 21-day fast, you're going to be like, oh, I would love some of those French fries that never go old in their whole life type of a thing. Your flesh is going to revolt. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, your flesh is going to revolt. Galatians chapter 5 tells me the following. This is a tough scripture right here. It says in Galatians 5, 17, it says, for the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit. That's why there's a war. 
The war is because your flesh desires what is opposite to the spirit. And the spirit, what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict, okay, in conflict with each other so that you are not to do, what does it say? Whatever you want. Your flesh wants to do whatever it wants, but we've got to discipline the flesh so that we see breakthrough in our spiritual life. Galatians chapter 5 verse 19, it continues, and this is a tough one. It says the acts of the flesh are obvious, okay? Sexual immorality, okay? In, listen, there's some of us, you, you've, you've tried for five years to break your porn addiction. You get in this 21-day Daniel fast, don't focus on the porn addiction, focus on pressing into God and it will fall off your life and you will be free. Because for five years, you've tried everything. You've hidden. God is speaking to someone right now. You've hidden it so deep. No one even knows that it's around you. And it'll begin to fall off your life. Because right here, it's an act of the flesh that's got a stronghold over your life. Impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, none of us. Jealousy, none of us at the 1030 service. Fits of rage, especially at the 1030 service. None of us, we're all really good around here. Here's a, none of us have selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, never. Drunkenness, okay, that's only the Saturday night crew, orgies and the like. I warn you, as I did before, and those who live like this, what does it say? Will not inherit the kingdom. Come on, let's say, will not inherit the kingdom of God. You and I together, say, that's you, neighbor. That's me, pastor. If I live like that, I will not inherit the kingdom of God. I cannot fulfill the purpose and the destiny of my life. Selfish ambition, dissension, disunity, gossip, Come on, witchcraft is like disobedience. If those things are involved in my life, I will not inherit the kingdom of God. And so like Daniel, Daniel says, I'm the gain understanding and I'm the submit myself to God. And then he's gonna dispatch a miracle in my life. You and I need a miracle that needs to be dispatched in our life. Here's another thing that fasting does for our flesh. It breaks the act over the flesh over our life. It breaks the acts of flesh over our life. We see this in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. I love this. It says, but like a boxer, I strictly discipline my body. The discipline of fasting. Like a boxer, I strictly discipline my body and make it, what is that word? A slave so that after I have preached, after I've led my family, after I've participated in ministry, as, as I've been a part of Fusion Church, as I've preached the gospel to others, I myself will not somehow be disqualified as unfit for service. Again, the, the, the flesh is going to try and own you. But in the discipline of fasting, I understand that the destiny and the purpose of God on my life is far greater than the acts of flesh. And just like during the ABCs of financial freedom, we use that no button. Some of us have got to learn to say no to food. I mean, most of the guys in the house today, you can look at this right here over Christmas break, and you can say, I should have said no a little bit more. But I just kept on saying yes. I just kept on saying yes. I just kept, and then you got on the scale. You're like, yeah, that was bad. I should have said no. I should have said no. And, and so uh, we're not going to die. If, if, if you quit a few things over the next 21 days, starting January 10th through January 30th, you, you're not going to die. Trust me, you will survive. But I can tell you this. Your walk with Christ will become stronger. Your spirituality, your sensitivity to what God is doing in your life. The issues, the addictions, the anxiety. The, the stress will begin to fall off your life and you will begin to see the supernatural happen within your life. So number one, you know, the fasting and, and the flesh is going to revolt. Here's number two, fasting draws us closer to Christ. I love that. Fasting draws me closer to Christ because I'm putting aside the distractions, putting aside the news feed on Facebook. I'm putting aside the radio. I mean, I, I, I will turn off the radio in my car and I will drive in silence. Now, if I'm honest, most of us hate silence in this room. You hate it. You go to sleep with the TV on. You go to sleep with the light on. You fall asleep in the couch. You go to sleep with the Facebook or the Instagram or the Snapchat. You're like, oh, who, who texts me? Turn it off. Turn it off and get silent with God. Here, here's the thing. Get vulnerable with God. Get vulnerable so that he can start to deal with the soulish issues, the mind, the will, and the emotions so the spirit can have precedence of your life. 
Uh, why do we draw closer to God? Because we have this fear of missing out. That Daniel said, hey, God, I would love to step up and do your work in your kingdom, but I have this fear. And it says in Daniel 10, then he continued, do not be afraid, Daniel. That when we press into God, fear is dispelled in our life. Anxiety is dispelled within our life. Stress is dispelled within our life. And we don't have this fear of missing out, this fear of what's everybody else doing, the fear of did they win or did they lose? Trust me, whether the sports team won or lost, your life can continue because they didn't even stress about you not watching that NFL game. Okay, they moved ahead as usual and you were just fine if you didn't watch it. You could get the highlights. What is my favorite show, Chicago PD or Chicago Fire or, you know, uh, all those different things. Guess what? DVR it and sign up for Netflix or Hulu because they ain't going to disappear and they would still love your 1099 at the end of the month, you know? They're not going to die. Trust me. They know what they're doing. They're a good business because it says this, fast, fasting allows our spirit to take precedence over the flesh. Think about that. Fasting, the discipline of fasting, it's not easy. The discipline of fasting allows my spirit to take precedence over my flesh. And if the thing we're honest in this place today, we could look back in 2016 and say, man, that addiction took precedence over my spirit. That rage took precedence over my spirit. That selfish ambition took precedence over my spirit. That lust took precedence. That desire for a relationship when God said, do not be in a relationship, took precedence. That choice to move in together when the Word of God says, be separate until you come together in the marriage bed, took precedence. Should I keep on going? I think there are many of us that said, hey, there's precedence of my flesh that's going to happen. And I'm believing that in 2016, we say, God, I want to honor my spirit. Because when I honor my spirit, I've seen that your purpose and your destiny will be accomplished. That you release the miraculous. That you dispatch. And I've learned this. When I honor the flesh, there's no miraculous. When I honor the flesh, there's no supernatural. But when I honor the spirit, God steps in. And how many of us need God to step into our life? God to step into our children. God to step into our job. God to step into our boss. Someone should be saying amen to that. God to step into this region. God to step into this housing market. God to step into this economy. God to step into the statistics. We need God to step in. But when I honor the flesh, I bind, I literally bind God from stepping in. But when I honor the spirit, God says, thank you so much. You've given me a key. Now I can dispatch the miracle that you need. Because insanity is doing the same. If I'm going to operate in the flesh, then I'm the receiver of the flesh. But if I'm going to operate in the spirit, that, that's why, come on, that, that's why giving is such a big thing. Because when I give, when I tithe, when I trust God with the first fruit of my income, you know what I'm doing? I'm saying, God, I trust you. God, I'm operating in the spirit. It doesn't make sense. I know it can go to a whole lot of things, but I'm taking the first fruits, I'm taking the first 10%, and I'm laying it down so that you can place your super on my natural. I'm giving you the possible so that you can do the impossible in my life. But so many of us operate in the flesh to say, well, I'm just going to figure it out. I'm just going to see how it happens. I'm just going to do that. And God says, you're binding me from sending, from dispatching the miraculous to your life. And until you trust me, until you step out in faith, until you lay down your life, as Daniel said, I humble myself, I gain understanding. Then when I do that, I release the blessings of God in my life. The question is, what do you want? Do you want the blessings of God or do you want the works of your flesh? I want the blessings of God. Anyone else? All right, just this side. This side, do you want the blessings of God or do you want the acts of the flesh? You know, this is the acts of the flesh. This is the blessings of God. What do you want? Blessings of God, acts of flesh. This is the blessings. This is, I, I want as much blessings, as much as God can do in my life as possible. I need it. But if I'm going to act in the flesh, I will reap in the flesh. If I'm going to act in the Spirit, I'm going to reap in the Spirit. So God, I'm going to get my discipline on. I'm going to deal with my coffee issues. 
I'm going to deal with my enjoyment of a nice fresh hoagie with, you know, ham and salami and lettuce and tomato and, you know, nice freshly baked bread, my Philly cheesesteak that's just dripping with oil. I'm going to say no for 21 days because it will be there when I get back. But I need the miraculous in my life. I need to God to step into my life. It says in this in James chapter 4 verse 8. It says, come near to God and He will come near to you. Come near to God and He will come near to you. Let's read it again. Come near to God and He will come near to you. One more time. Come near to <coughs> Come near to God and He will come. He, here's the beautiful thing. Here's freedom in this place today. You know what that scripture doesn't say? Come near to God if you read your Bible in 2015 every day. You know what that scripture doesn't say? Come near to God if you uh, participated in church for 52 weeks. You know what it doesn't say? Come near to God if you've got a love all, serve all, dream team t-shirt. You know what it doesn't say? Come near to God if you operated in the tithe. You know what it doesn't say? Come near to God if you didn't sin. You know what it simply says? Come near to God and He will come near to you. Draw closer to God regardless of your situation. Regardless of your thought process, regardless of your feelings, if you draw near to God with a contrite heart, with a humble heart, with a desire to gain understanding, He will step in and He will do the supernatural within your life. I love what it says in Matthew 26. It tells me the following. It says this. It says, watch and pray. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation because I what does it say? The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Watch and pray so that you don't fall into temptation because it says the following in that scripture, the flesh is weak and the spirit is willing. The flesh is weak and the spirit is willing. You know, when I look at this handout that you've received, there's eight breakthrough prayer points. Eight breakthrough prayer points. What are you willing to believe God for in 2016? What are those eight areas that if he would step in supernaturally, you would go, wow, God did the craziest things I've ever seen. If you would step out and say, God, I'm going to risk to write it down. I'm going to risk to step out. I'm going to risk to believe the impossible in 2016. Would you write it down? Would you pin this up on your refrigerator or maybe put it in your Bible or put it on your mirror in your bathroom and say, God, as I'm stepping out, I'm believing, and I, and I filled out number one for so many of you. Go on a mission trip in 2016. We've got two trips happening in March, one to Haiti and one to the Dominican Republic, the same island that we're going to take by storm in the month of March. And there's still some places you can see uh, the Connect Center to sign up and get some more details. But would you believe God to do the supernatural in your life in 2016? Would you risk to say, God, I'm not going to, I'm going to pray so that I don't fall into temptation because I know that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And I'm going to put aside the flesh so that I can press into you. Because I know this, and here's number three as we kind of close with this. Fasting brings supernatural breakthrough. Let's say that together. Fasting brings supernatural breakthrough. One more time. Fasting brings supernatural breakthrough. Because I've tried my natural. But how many of us believe we need some super on our natural? I've tried to make the hustle. I've tried to get that raise. I've tried to get that sales deal. I've tried to make that relationship work. I've tried to get my kid to shape up. I've tried to get my spouse to come to church. I've tried to do my best to say no to this, but it just keeps on haunting me. I've tried my best to deal with the issues of the past, and I can promise you this, that as we press into God, as we ask for His Spirit to empower us over the flesh, as it says in Daniel chapter 10, it says, Your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. Man, that is the most powerful promise that you and I can take away on the first Sunday of 2016, as your words were heard, I have come in response to them. Where do you need God to step in? Where do you need that miracle? Where do you need to trust Him and say, God, I've tried my best, but now I'm trusting you. I've been to this doctor. I've read this book. I've tried to deal with this issue, but for the next 21 days, 
Starting on January 10th, I'm going to submit myself to you. Now, I thought about this. I thought, men, dads, husbands, just imagine. Imagine you committed yourself to God for 21 days. Imagine you trusted Him to say, my family, my kids, my spouse, my career, I'm the press in. I'm the believe in the impossible. It looks bleak right now, but God's in control in 2016. And it might be the nighttime, but the morning is coming. You know, I look at Scripture and I see Moses fasted for 40 days. I thought, man, if we did that a fusion, there would be a revolt that would happen in this church. Esther in the Old Testament, she was a Jew in captivity. And there was this guy that was trying to plot against all the Jews to be wiped out. You and I wouldn't be here if that guy had come to pass. And Esther's uncle went to her and said, listen, if you don't rise up for such a time as this, deliverance will come from someplace else. And Esther and her friends fasted and prayed for three days for breakthrough. So there's nothing special about a 21 day. There's nothing special about a 40 day. There's nothing special about a three day or a one day. It has to do with the heart. It's not legalism or religion, it's a heart issue. And Mordecai said, if you don't stand up for such a time as this, deliverance is going to come from someplace else. And I thought to myself, there's too much on the line for Fusion Church. There's too much on the line for men in this church. There's too much on the line for fathers in this church. There's too much on the line for spouses in this church. There's too much on the line for those of us that are single in this church. There's too much on the line for those of us that are divorced in this church. There's too much on the line for those of us that have a vision in this church. Because if we don't raise up for such a time as this, if we don't stand up for such a time as this, if we don't press in to God for such a time as this, then just maybe God is going to pass us over. Just maybe God is going to pass you over as a father to your children and deliverance is going to come from a coach. Deliverance is going to come from a teacher. Deliverance is going to come from someone else. But I would hope that we would rise up and we would say for such a time as this, God has called us to stand in the gap. God has called us to give up the acts of the flesh and to press into Him. I saw Jesus in the New Testament. He had a calling and a destiny. For 30 years, He walked this earth. For 40 days, He fasted and prayed. And then He came out and in three years, He turned this world upside down. There's a vision and a dream that you've got in your heart. And you feel every year, God, is this the year? God, is this the year? God, is this the year? But if you're patient, if you're patient, the vision is going to come to pass. And on the 30th year, God said, my son, you're ready. My son, go into the wilderness for 40 days. Hunger and thirst for the Word of God. And the miraculous will begin to appear. Destiny will begin to appear. The supernatural will begin to appear. And Jesus walked out 40 days later and He said, I'm ready for my ministry. And in three years, He turned this world upside down. Here's the last one. His disciples saw everything. They hung around him and he said, two by two, go out there and pray and deliver people. And the disciples went out and they prayed for someone and they prayed for someone. And then they got to someone and that person had a demonic spirit. The enemy had taken control of their physical body. And the disciples started to pray for this demonic person and the demon spoke back to them and said, I know who Paul is. I know who Jesus is. I've read Facebook and social media, 
but who on earth are you because you ain't got no power and so the disciples went back to Jesus with their tails between their legs and they said Jesus they said we prayed but the demon spoke back to us and Jesus turned around and said prayer and fasting brings the breakthrough church if there is a need in your life if there is a bondage in your life if there is addiction in your life if there's an act of flesh a selfish ambition lust conceitedness covetness if there is something that's holding you back from fulfilling the destiny and the purpose I'm here today to tell you fasting and prayer is going to give you the breakthrough fasting and prayer is going to give you the release fasting and prayer is where God says now you're ready rise up and begin to step into the destiny that God has for you rise up and begin to step into the destiny that God has for you rise up and step into the destiny that God has for you listen rise up and step into the destiny that God has for you because here's my promise today if he said it he's gonna do it 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 if he said it some of you not getting it if he said it in the Word of God he's gonna do it come on church let's worship him in 2016 come on let's lift up praises to God because you've said it you're gonna do it